Hi, everybody. Welcome to Virtual Escapes by Paul Travel. Uh, I'm Rhonda Svian, the Leisure Manager, and uh, co-hosting with me today is Julie Beckdash. Hi, everyone. Thank you all for taking the time this afternoon uh, to join us. Um, it's great to see so many familiar names who have registered and some new ones. So welcome, everybody. Um, if you're joining us for the first time, um, we hope you find this webinar inspirational, informational, and um, just really enjoy this. It's, it's a time right now in our lives that we all want to keep our, our daydreaming alive for travel. It's, uh, it's going to come back. It will come back, but it's, it's kind of exciting to keep on uh, thinking about where we want to go to next. So today, um, we are bringing you back to Canada. Um, there's so many of us out there that are missing the travel and we're wanting to do something and we might want to do something just a little bit locally and we thought, oh my gosh, the Rocky Mountaineer, it was the perfect, perfect thing to explore and experience and showcase our Canadian um, Rocky Mountains. So we wanted to give you a little taste of what you'll experience on this luxury train. Now, I've been really lucky. I was, I was saying just a, a few minutes earlier, I was really lucky to have an opportunity to travel between Vancouver and Banff on the Rocky Mountaineer. And I thought it was such an amazing experience. I just, it's what a fun and spectacular way to kind of see the, the Rocky Mountains. And it's really a different perspective than driving. Um, our guest today, uh, Tamara, was saying that it's, it's changed since I was on there. So I'm really excited to, to kind of see this webinar along with all of you as well. So just before I turn this over to Julie, who's going to introduce our lovely guest, um, wanted to let you know that um, any questions that you have, please put them in the Q&A box. Um, all your feedback, all your questions are, are welcomed, and we'll make sure to, to get to um, all of the questions and give your answers at the end of the presentation. Um, also, next week, just jumping ahead a week, um, we're keeping it uh, local in our own backyard, and we're going to be showcasing Alberta. So Travel Alberta is going to be joining us. So I think it'll be a, a really great, great uh, follow-up from, from today. So, Julie, um, just wanted to turn it over to you. I know I don't know if you've experienced the Rocky Mountaineer. Have you? No, I haven't. No, I've seen it a couple of times um, driving through BC. I've seen it on the side of the highway, but I just, it would be such an amazing perspective to, uh, it's to so see. So great. Yeah. Yeah. Good, but for sure. Um, well, without further ado, um, joining us today is Tamara Mallon. She is um, joining us from um, North Vancouver. She is the um, National Account Manager and she oversees Canada and the Canadian sales team. She's been with Rocky Mountaineer for about five years and in that time she's traveled quite a few times on the train. Um, last year she was saying she got to um, experience uh there's in the in the bow valley or in the rocky mountains there's two kind of main bears or split lip and the boss and she said last year she got to see the boss who actually had his paws on the train and uh and then along on that trip uh another six bears eagles salmon um, bighorn sheep and all sorts of things so yeah just amazing like not only the scenery but all the wildlife that you see so Thank you so much, Tamara, and I'll let you um, take it away. Thank you, Julie. Did you wave at the train when we when you saw? Oh, yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> we have a great video about how everyone waves at the train, and we all joke about it. But when you're on board, you can't help it because uh -huh. everyone is standing waving, and you're waving back, and it's like. It's always funny because I see um, a lot of the old gentlemen, they'll buy the engineer hats and they always say it's for their grandkids, but by the end of the journey, they're wearing it. It's like we instantly turn into kids again when you're back on board a train. Aww, that's so fun. <laughs> I'm going to share my screen now and move forward with the presentation. Um, and kind of like Rhonda said, hopefully I can make this into, um, into, just more of an aspirational journey and looking forward to, you know, next summer, next year and the experiences of on board the journey. I don't want to, hmm, why did it work before? There we go. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't want to talk about necessarily 
the destination or packages. I think everyone here on this call probably has a pretty good idea what the Rockies are. And, and I'm sure many of you have been a million times and always kind of wonder, why would I do the Rocky Mountain here? I do these presentations all the time in my old days. Of course, I'd travel all over the world doing them in person. Now I'm sitting in my office doing them. Um, and it's always a little trickier when I'm hosting for Western Canadians, people in BC and Alberta, because, you know, it, it is a challenge to think about traveling in your own backyard. Um, and it's also a challenge to think about going through the Rockies where many of us have either camped or traveled or just get in our car and go for road trips for. So I think if we've learned one thing from COVID, it's, and I've always said this, you know, not only is it important and a lot of people feel comfortable and safe staying in their own backyard, we've always said we were going to do this. So many people say to me, oh, well, one day, or it's on my bucket list. After I complete this, I'm going to do Rocky Mountaineer. And again, the one thing we've learned from the past few months is that that one day is actually right now. So move it up the list. I would say look forward to doing this next season and then maybe some of those other journeys you can do the year afterwards. So I'll start talking about our, our journeys through Extraordinaire. Um, one of the things most people realize is that we are a seasonal train. We do travel from mid-April to mid-October. And despite the fact that we are a Canadian owned company and we do travel in Canada, we could travel uh, in the winter, that wouldn't be a problem. But what differentiates us between Rocky Mountaineer and other rail companies is we travel during daylight hours only. So we jokingly say you see the sights, you don't sleep through the sights. And that really is a big difference. It, Rocky Mountaineer isn't a, a means of transportation. It truly is a luxury rail experience. It's not about going from point A to point B. It's about seeing and experiencing everything in between there. And so that's why we travel during daylight hours only and we only travel seasonally because as you know, um, in the dead of winter, it's dark by four o'clock and sometimes it doesn't even brighten up till you know eight or nine in the morning. So we'd miss a huge part of our day if we didn't. The other thing people always say to me is, you know, why would I take the train when we could just drive there? Um, you have to remember these tracks were built more than 130 years ago. On some of the lines we're taking, these are the original CP tracks that connected Canada from east to west. So they were built long before the highways were. So you're not going to be um, hugging the highway most of the time. As a matter of fact, you're going to be traveling on bridges and areas that are inaccessible to vehicles. So there really is no comparison to driving. I also say, you know, when you're driving, what do you really see? Uh, you know, if I, myself and my family go to the Rockies, I'm in the front, I want CBC, my daughter in the back wants Justin Bieber. And Lord knows I can't be traveling with a glass of wine in one hand and a camera in the other, which I can when I'm on the train. So it's a very different offering, of course, um, traveling by rail versus doing it yourself. So we basically have three core routes, and that's what I want to talk about today. It's just kind of our routes, what's included, and life on board the train. Not necessarily specific itineraries or packages, and I don't need to talk to you about, you know, what there is to see and do, of course, in Banff, with Jasper, and Lake Louise but kind of give you a description of each route and the highlights, which might help you decide which one works better for you. So we are still a small little company. We travel basically in two provinces. All of our journeys are bought in these one-way segments. So everywhere you see a large blue diamond, those are what we consider our starting or stopping points. Doesn't necessarily mean the train starts there, but that's where your itinerary or journeys will start. So all of our journeys can start, for example, in Vancouver and tra travel eastbound into Alberta. Or you can start your journeys in Alberta, travel westbound to Vancouver, and then we can do what we call a combination. I'll talk about that. We call those circle journeys. I usually start with first passage to the west. Everyone always asks me, what's your favorite itinerary? I, I absolutely do not have a favorite itinerary, but if you only have the chance to travel with Rocky Mountaineer once, um, and if it is only a one way, 
I do somewhat lean to first passage to the west. So as mentioned, these are the original CP tracks between Kamloops, Banff, and Lake Louise that connected Canada originally. So they're steeped in history, they're that true Canadiana feel. Um, and I really think, you know, if you only can do it once, we are the only train that has, the passenger train that has exclusive rights on these tracks. So it really um, is something special that you wouldn't be able to see uh, anywhere else. Of course, when you're on first passage to the west, you're going to experience Castle Mountain. If you're, for example, departing from Banff, working your way to Vancouver, you're going to be leaving the Rockies, passing Castle Mountain. You're going to go through the spiral tunnels. Um, for those of you who don't know, the spiral tunnels are an engineering marvel. There is only one other spiral tunnel in the world in Switzerland. And the just the, it amazes me every time I hear the story about how they were built. And this was in the day of pencil, paper, and dynamite. There were no computers, um, no technology, and they managed to basically create a corkscrew between two of the mountains to help redu reduce the slope so the train could go up or down the grade in a more safe manner. It's really interesting. Um, of course, the beautiful lakes, the Shushwaps, Vermilion Lake, and some of the various bridges that we pass through. So again, any first passage of the West can start, for example, in Banff, the train itself, Banff or Lake Louise, and travel to Vancouver, or in the reverse from Vancouver to Banff and Lake Louise. Journey Through the Clouds is our second core route. So again, it can start in Vancouver, travel to Jasper, or in return. So you'll see here, much like the first picture I showed, it shows Vancouver, Kamloops, Kamloops, Jasper. And again, that's because we travel during daylight hours only. So this means your midpoint hotels are included in our packages. So from Vancouver to Kamloops, it's approximately 388 kilometers, and it takes us roughly 10 to 12 hours, depending on the track time. That is because we're traveling approximately 35 uh, kilometers an hour. The train is traveling, while it's not crawling, but in many areas, it will come to kind of what we call a rolling stop. So you can have that perfect picture. So you can um, see the sights. Each car will like slowly roll up to, for example, Cisco Crossing or Hell's Gate. So everyone can get that perfect picture. It isn't, you know, that blurry picture of traveling by it at 70 kilometers an hour. So in all of our routes, you're going to get up in the morning. I'll talk more about this. You'll arrive into your midpoint hotel, usually in the evening, and then the evenings are free for you to enjoy the evening. You can go for a walk, stretch your legs. If you want, just, you know, early to bed because they're long days on the train. You're going to be eating incredible food, drinking, laughing. and They are long days, despite not doing anything very physical. They do make for long days. Then, of course, on day two, you'd make your way to Jasper if, if we we're starting in Vancouver. Along the way, of course, you'll see the incredible Pyramid Falls. I can't say it enough, but these tracks were built a long time ago. So depending on the wind, if you're outside on one of the, uh, for example, on Gold Leaf on the observation deck, you can actually get uh, feel damp moisture from the spray of the falls. That's how close we go. Mount Robson, of course, that's everyone's highlight on this specific route because it is the tallest peak in the Canadian Rockies. It does have its own weather system. So it's kind of that excitement. Will we see the top of Mount Robson? And everyone's, you know, just waiting for it. I have traveled on this route and driven it many times too. And to this day, even on the most clear day, I cannot say that I have actually seen the very top of Mount Robson. So many of you might be luckier than I. I've seen almost all of it, and I've been really fortunate to travel on wonderful days, but I've still just never seen the top of it. And then, of course, again, you're going to have the beautiful uh, lakes and valleys that we travel through. Hell's Gate, for example, um, you'll see both on Journey Through the Clouds and First Passage to the West. On First Passage to the West, of course, you're going to see the last spike, again, that true Canadiana. So each route has something just a little bit different, um, albeit traveling through the Rockies, they all kind of have their own highlights. 
For Western Canadians, sometimes I do recommend Rainforest to Gold Rush. And this is for those guests who say to me, you know, I kind of feel like I've seen everything in the Rockies. Um, they want something a little bit new if they're combining it with another route and making what we call a circle journey. So for example, starting in Jasper, in this case, you'd make your way to Quinell, have your overnight there, Whistler, Vancouver, and then take one of the other routes back to Jasper, just as an example. The interesting thing with Rainforest to Gold Rush as well is if you haven't been to Whistler for a while, or you would like to go to Whistler, but a day and a half is enough for you, another great option to lean to this route. Um, it's really different and interesting in that if, for example, you start this route in Vancouver, you're going to move your way to Whistler. It's going to leave the North Vancouver station in the morning. You're going to get to Whistler around noon, one o'clock, which means you're going to have all afternoon and evening free. So it's plenty of time to, you know, rent a bike or go hiking, canoeing. If you want to just walk around Whistler Village and then have some dinner in the evening, there's incredible culinary uh, in Whistler. If you want to sit at a hotel and just kind of have a spa pool lounge day, really up to you. Your overnight in Whistler is included. And then the next day you're going to make your way to Quinnell. And I always jokingly say it's not exactly the hotbed of entertainment in BC. And it is not. But again, these tracks were built long before any of that. And when these tracks were built, actually, Quinnell was quite a bustling town. There were over 10,000 um, miners there, gold miners. Uh, the only problem is there was actually no gold to be found, so it didn't achieve that level of uh, gold rush enthusiasm that some of the other cities have. But completely different from Vancouver to Whistler now, you're going to have traveled along Howe Sound, as you see here, so really along the ocean all the way up. But then as you move in through on your way to Quinell, it's a very dry desert geography, um, completely different topography than you will have seen the first day. So now you're in the Fraser River Valley and Canyon. So very, very different day two. And then of course, day three, once you wake up in the morning, we transfer you back to the train. You're gonna make your way up to Jasper and here again, hopefully passing or seeing Mount Robson. So three very different days on the train. Again, I think for Western Canadians, maybe more than other people, if you feel you've seen the Rockies or you wanna see something new, this is a, a, a really nice alternative. So I mentioned circle journey. So this is now where you can combine any of those journeys. So as I mentioned, you could start in Jasper and take Rainforest to Gold Rush on those three days through Quinell, Whistler, Vancouver have sightseeing in Vancouver, even possibly over to Victoria, and then make your way back, and then take the train, for example, uh, through Kamloops up to Jasper, or travel on first passage to the west, ending your journey possibly in Lake Louise, and then we transfer you back to Jasper. There's quite a few combinations here. So you have a really great team available to help you at Paul Travel because there's something like 68 different combinations available. So you could do everything from just a short four day weekend getaway to uh, we really do have some packages as long as 13 days. It's kind of up to you. So rail service levels, we have two levels of service and I really don't like to call them classes. And the reason is because the inclusions are exactly the same. But before I talk about them, you will realize this is what I call a pre COVID picture um, as she is touching his back and welcoming this guest onto the train. Um, in the new world, we won't be doing that. You will still be welcome on the train and we're excited to have you. But of course, safety is our priority, not only for our guests, but for our staff as well. So what it will look like by the time it's rolled out next year, as you can imagine, there's a few variables, but we do know that there will be pre-board screening for all guests, as well as temperature checks. We already had incredible sanitation. We had teams that walked throughout the train throughout the course of the day, but we'll have additional dis disinfection. Um, so we have misters going on. We have HEPA filters. We also have large outdoor viewing vestibules. So if you want to be outside, as you see this lady, you can. We do, and we always have restricted movements in the car. So what's different again with Rocky Mountaineer? 
is with some other trains you might have been on, you will move from car to car to car to get to the dining car or the bar car. As you see when I talk about our different levels of service, each individual car is a bar car and is your own dining car. So you do not move around, which means in this case, when we're talking um, post COVID days, you will be with the same group throughout the duration. You will not, it will not be opened up to hundreds or even a thousand guests walking between car to car. And of course, we'll adjust the number of seats per car if needed um, when the time comes. I do see some questions that are popping up, but we'll take those at the end. So again, two levels of service. We have Silver Leaf. So Silver Leaf is a custom design, single level, uh, all glass dome coach. I never really feel that the pictures that we show for Silver Leaf do it justice. It's actually a very tall, lofty car. It is a smaller car. It holds less guests at maximum capacity, which we wouldn't fill it to anymore. It is approximately um, 52 guests. So it, it, because of its size, it's smaller, it has that tall, lofty feel. It tends to be, I'm not really sure what the words are, but less formal, more comfortable, more casual, whatever you'd like to say. Um, but it just, just the way the, the car itself works and our hosts on board, people mingle and stand up and walk around. Again, um, I do get asked all the time, and I'm sure this is one of the questions that will pop up. At this point, we don't have plexiglass between the cars, um, and if required, by this time next year, we will. Uh, of course, safety, as I mentioned, is always priority. The seats themselves are very comfortable. The pitch is actually the same in both silver leaf and gold leaf. And while I'm talking about that, um, as we say, be pampered in the comfort of your own seat. While on board the train, in both gold and silver leaf, all of your inclusions are the same. So this means all of your meals, drinks, alcohol, non-alcoholic beverages, transfers, those midpoint hotels and luggage handling are included in both gold and silver leaf. So what that really means is the physical hardware, so the actual car itself is different, and some of the services. So in silver leaf, we have what we call seat side service. You'll still receive a menu. As you see here, you're going to have um, real silverware, real stemware, real cutlery. For example, you're, it isn't going to be like you would imagine on aircrafts. And our host will then prepare your food in the galley. So it's hot plated meals to serve, seat side service. So it's not a pre-boxed lunch. I know sometimes when people think about seat side service, I think they think of, you know, a trolley going down the middle and just throwing you that box of preheated up food and you take the foil off and half is still frozen and half is too hot. At least that's what it used to be like on the airlines for me. Um, it isn't like that. So just know that you're going to receive a menu and it will be seated um, meal service. By the way, that cheesecake is by far the best dessert on the entire train for the whole duration. Gold leaf, a little bit different in the car itself, but again, the inclusions are the same. So your meals, drinks, alcohol, transfers, luggage handling and hotel included in both. Now, however, we're on what we call a bi-level coach. So upstairs there, that is a glass dome viewing platform. Downstairs now we have a, a more formal sit down dining room as opposed to seat side service with a much larger open air vestibule. In Silverleaf, there is what we call a breezeway. I don't really put a picture of it or sell it as um, a viewing platform, but at any time, two to four guests can go out there and get fresh air and take photographs. So it still is nice if you just wanna get some of that, that cool breeze, for example, if the train's in the autumn or spring and just get kind of a burst of fresh air, it is available in Silverleaf as well. So the gold leaf, a little bit different. It is a bi-level all glass stone car. Now in gold leaf, we have um, a winding stair staircase that takes you from the dining room to the upstairs platform. However, on every gold leaf car, we do have a lift. An elevator would be a little bit of a extension to call it that, but we do have a lift. 
So if you have any mobility issues, our team can help you go up and down. Sometimes I say for your own in for your own ease, you might in that case lean towards silver leaf because you do need the help of our hosts and the washrooms are downstairs. So if, if you don't want to have to wait for our hosts to go up and down to the washroom or the dining, I would probably lean towards silver leaf in that case. But I just so you know, we, we can help anyone. Also, in both gold and silver leaf, we can accommodate most dietary needs. So already on our menu, we do have low sodiums, vegetarian, vegan, um, all the basics. Uh, but if you have any specific dietary needs or allergies, please do let us know in advance um, and we can prepare those. Most meals are cooked on board the train. So at worst case scenario, our chefs will do the best they can, but we have limited capacity on the train. So we can only use what we have. We are not able to do a full religious meal. So we can't, um, we can't offer kosher or halal, but other than that, we, we can usually accommodate most needs. So upstairs here, you will see the large view viewing platform. A little bit different than Silver Leaf. It doesn't have that large expanse or the headroom. Actually, when you're standing up, it's, it's fairly low to your head, but you will notice both in Gold and Silver Leaf, you'll see kind of a line across the window. It is all UVA, UVB protected, and of course, air conditionings and a help of HEPA filters throughout. In gold leaf, you will go downstairs and there is, you know, what we call a la carte dining. So this is family style dining for now. How this will look next year, that could possibly change. But what makes Rocky Mountaineer so different is, is the experience. Part of that experience is the dining and sitting and having breakfast with Brits and lunch with Aussies and meeting fellow Canadians and just finding out why they're on board Rocky Mountaineer, or, you know, hearing their stories, how they've always wanted to come to the Canadian Rockies and it's their 50th wedding anniversary and they finally bit the bullet and did it. So that really adds to that whole experience. So it isn't just the sightseeing, it isn't just being on the train. Our hosts are storytellers, they're engaging and, and meeting other guests, that is a whole, that is a huge part of the overall experience. So if you're traveling together, a group of four or more, um, and you do want to sit together, we can accommodate that. All our tables are uh, seat four guests. Um, but otherwise, our hosts try to mix, mix everything up so you get to sit and dine with uh, different guests throughout the course of your meal. In both gold and silver leaf, your seats actually can move and face each other family style. So if, for example, you are a family, you can face each other and then turn them around uh, for example, if you're going downstairs or dining, or if you meet a, another couple that you find really interesting, you can turn and face each other, talk to each other, you know, have a, a drink or two together. And then once you realize they're really not that fun, don't worry, you can turn your seat back around. Of course, I mentioned it quite a few times, outdoor viewing platform. In Gold Leaf, it's quite large actually. Depending on the car, we can get anywhere from 12 to 16 guests outside. I personally love it. I just love the fresh air. I mean, you're sitting on a train, you're eating absolutely exquisite food and you're having drinks. Maybe you're not used to Bailey's and coffee and, and a glass of wine or a scotch with lunch. And then, you know, another, another uh, kind of last round with the hot cookies at the end of the day. So that fresh air to me really is a, a savior. So kind of briefly, a day in life aboard the train, you're going to rise and shine. We're going to pick you up and transfer you from your hotel to the train where you'll board the train nice and early in the morning. Of course, all your meals are included. So here's an example of one of the fabulous breakfasts. And you're on board the train two or three days, depending on which route. So it's really exciting because on the first day, maybe you'll try the, the salmon souffle. But on day two, you're just, you can't wait to get on board because you smell the coffee and croissants and you're like, today for sure I'm having those blueberry pancakes. And the same with lunches, you know, the first day, oh, I'll try the salmon. But the second day, you really you saw someone who ate one of our burgers with the homemade ketchup on the, on the brioche bun. So it's, it's really kind of day two is always even better because you know what to look forward to. So I find that everyone always thinks that day two is even more fun. And those who then get the third day on Rainforest to Build Rush have even more to look forward to. 
I did mention that our hosts on board the train here, this is Kevin talking to the guests, are storytellers. So yes, you're going to sit there, but no, you're not just going to sit there and watch the world go by. Anytime we come past a, a mile marker or a milestone that our hosts will want to talk about, we have what we call on board the um, mile post newspaper. So you can follow through and read on there, but they'll give you a heads up saying, you know, in about two mile markers from now, get your cameras ready because we're going to be passing the last spike or up ahead here. For example, a lot of times they'll know where some of the most incredible offspring nests are. There's this one nest. It encompasses the entire top of this um, power tower, I guess it is. And it's been there, they say, for almost 100 years. New families lead, come and go and just keep building on it. So our hosts will talk about the floral and fauna. They'll teach you about the history. And then they can answer individual questions. Each host kind of has their own thing. I know we have some hosts who are just really keen on bears and they've learned all about the different bears in the Rockies. And then some a little more in the history, especially when it comes to um, the history on the tracks and how Canada was built. And then in the evenings, of course, you're going to stay in your beautiful hotel. I know some of you like the idea of sleeping on the train and I do hear that all the time. You know, I love thinking about sleeping on the train. And to be honest, you do probably will like it and I did it as a kid too, but you like it for about one night. So instead, we're gonna put you up in a nice hotel room. You're gonna have your own bed, your own washroom, a great night's sleep. And when you get back on board on the second or third day, you're going to feel so much more refreshed and you easily forget about sleeping on board the train. So when we talk about the perfect ending to the day, I did really just talk about the three core train routes. But within that, we can create so many packages. And within those packages, we have quite a few different options. We always call it our silver leaf and gold leaf hotel. So if you're of the mindset, oh, it's just a hotel, I only sleep there one night, we partner up with a lot of great, strong three and a half, four star properties. If on the other hand, you want that true iconic feeling and you want to be at what used to be the old CP hotels, which are now the Fairmonts, you can create a package that has the Fairmonts throughout. So we really leave it up to you to kind of mix and match and create a journey that is really specific to your wants and needs. When to travel. Everyone always asks me when the best season is. It's kind of like the best route. There isn't a best season. I though, as a Canadian, do always lean to what we call shoulder season. So the spring or the really late fall um, for various reasons. Kind of the pros and cons of every season, of course, in the spring. People always think about the colors of the fall, but there's the colors of the spring. Um, that a lot of times the, the peaks of the mountains will still have snow on it so you can kind of get that but meanwhile down on the ground everything is just coming to life so you have those incredible spring smells everyone talks about all the waterfalls they're not waterfalls it's just runoff but it does make the mountains look wonderful just everywhere you go you see kind of waterfalls the animals have come out of hibernation and they're kind of still a little bit slow. So the bear in particular tend to just kind of sit back and watch the train go by. It's like, oh, hey man, there's the train. But they don't really scamper away quite yet because they're not quite awake. So really good for wildlife sighting. Hit and miss, you really never know what's going to happen with the weather. So all I can say in that case is you're going to have to layer up um, and check the weather. What the temperature in the Rockies is versus what it is in Vancouver or can loops all three days could be completely different. The other nice thing about the spring is generally the skiers have left but the international summer travelers haven't moved in so the Rockies itself does tend to feel a little bit quieter. Summer fabulous of course because the beautiful long days so in the evening when you're off the train um, you do tend to have more time to go for a walk to sit outside enjoy a nice meal in Whistler for example the village or even in Kamloops go for a walk along the beach before you go to bed um, one of the disadvantages unfortunately very little bit of wildlife sighting they have retreated deep into the forest so we really don't see a lot of wildlife um, and the summer can be busier itself in both uh, the Rockies and in Whistler for international tourists. 
everything is pre-booked, so you don't have to necessarily queue up or wait in line, but you might arrive to your sightseeing and you know have to wait on the coach for example for a little while until it's your group's turn to get to that sightseeing. Autumn, fall, whatever you'd like to call it, I just want to warn everyone that for the most part we don't have as much of the changing leaves as people think. It's really kind of in a, a, a small area of the Rockies. Um, people think they always kind of think of it as Atlantic Canada and you have to remember that most of the trees are fir trees and so they're not losing their leaves. The other interesting thing about the autumn is, and we were just talking about this before we jumped on, it, the seasons are different by about a month based on elevation. So what you're going to get in the Rockies can, will be completely different than what we might have here in Vancouver. So kind of like spring, once again, you just have to dress for all possible seasons. Without a doubt, best time for wildlife sightings. Um, the salmon are running, which means the bear are feeding. Everyone's bulking up for the winter ahead. So generally really good for wildlife sightings. And here, once you get later into September, you know, kind of after September 20th into early October, the Rockies itself once again start slowing down and the winter skiers haven't moved in. So there isn't a better or best. If you have some flexibility, you might want to look at the shoulders. But um, if you want to take full advantage of the longest days, then midsummer might be it for you. I mentioned a few times our packages. We do have numerous different curated packages. They can include everything from as much sightseeing as you want or what we call packages at leisure. So if you don't want the complete sightseeing and you want to do a self-drive, what this means is you can get off the train. We'll have a car available and ready for you to pick up the next morning. Uh, you drive around on during your days, but your evenings, the hotels will be pre-booked. And if you want, some of the sightseeing can. So again, you don't have to queue up, but it's really at your own leisure. And then there is no drop fee for the car that's included in these packages. It does work very well for Canadians. It's not your own car. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to maneuver about how, you know, where to get it, where to park while you're on the train. Um, so we do find that Canadians like to do this self-drive explorations. I have a few feature packages. I don't want to talk too much about them because really they are somewhat customizable. And I will say that again, if for example, you're flying to Vancouver and taking a one way on first passage to the West, and you have friends or family in Vancouver or more likely Calgary, if you want to back out that night in hotel in Calgary and save the money and stay with friends or family, we can do that. We cannot change the middle portion. So we can't change the train, the train dates, or the, um, some of the midpoint hotels. But what we can do is kind of how many times you stay in Vancouver or Calgary. So again, this is a great example. If you want to do a shorter variation of this and really do a four day, three day getaway, you could fly to Vancouver, take the train through Kamloops, spend one night in Lake Louise, one night in Banff and transfer to Calgary. You could literally just spend one night in Banff if it's just about the train. Um, so we have numerous options available. And again, that's what the, the team at Paul Travel can help you with. So journey through the clouds, this is an example. You could start, for example, this itinerary. I know living in Edmonton, this is an unusual one. It's a pre-built deck, so I apologize. But you could start in Vancouver, take the train up to Jasper, and then sightsee its way to Calgary. It is a shorter drive or transfer from Calgary to Edmonton than it is uh, Jasper to Edmonton. But if you want it again, you can stop or start at any of your time in Jasper. It doesn't have to do the sightseeing included. This is a much longer itinerary, but if you really had some time on your side and you really want to do Rainforest to Gold Rush with a bunch of sightseeing, um, this might be something to look at. And this is a great example of one of our circle journeys. So this isn't one of the longer ones. It doesn't actually have a lot of sightseeing like some of those other itineraries I just showed you. This one truly is about the most days on the train. And when we take our surveys at the end, Without a doubt, the number one thing everyone says is they wish they had more days on the train. Um, 
you know, the two days just isn't enough. It's incredible, but people always want more days on the train. So we have some circle journeys that can do that. We have some that included an absolute ton of sightseeing or some that are really more about the train and not about the sightseeing. One thing I want to let you know is that we never go on sale. Our price is our price. And for some people, they love that. And for others, it's new because we're used to booking a winter sun product and then having to check the price all the time because it might go up or down. Same with cruises. Our price doesn't change. We do have promotions. We have what we call value add. So in this case, for our 2021 departures, we get free perks. So if you're a cruiser, you might be familiar with this. So you'll get two free night hotels. Um, you'll get air, private airport transfers. You can get a dinner included. Um, currently, this is scheduled to end at the end of the month for all 2021 bookings, as well as we have a $25 refundable deposit. So if you're hesitant, but you want to lock this space down because we do while we don't go on sale, we do fill up quite quickly. You have to think about our international guests that come to visit us. Much like when we go to Australia, we plan eight, nine months, a year in advance. They do the same coming here. So um, we do fill up quite quickly, in particular in August and September. So if you're thinking about it, we have a non-risk deposit that you could apply right now to lock something down. And then deposit wouldn't be due until the end of November. So it gives you a window to think about it. Normally I never show videos on um, virtual presentations because a lot of times they jam up, but this one's 15 seconds and I have to give it a try because I just think this is a great little video for Western Canada, especially us living here. We kind of forget how beautiful it is. So fingers crossed it works today. See the cities, forests, and soaring peaks of Western Canada from an entirely new perspective. Explore the Canadian Rockies by Luxury Rail. Rocky Mountaineer, all aboard amazing. So hopefully that worked. Um, obviously I'm very biased. <laughs> so if you don't believe me, please do go online. You can read all the reviews you like. And better yet, we have a wonderful social media page. So on uh, our YouTube site, there's great route videos. So if you're not sure which is the best route for you, which, or you've forgotten, you know, what the highlights are, you can look on our YouTube station and see all the different videos. Normally in a live presentation, I'd play quite a few videos um, that really show the interior and life on board the train. So it's a little different on virtual but we have some beautiful videos out there that really will give you a good idea of what you would expect. I think you already know how to get a hold of your wonderful team. Um, and I will probably let Rhonda and Julie open it up to questions now. That's so great. Thanks, Tamara. Okay, it's, it, it looks exactly like it did when I went. <laughs> Exterior, but I think the food, we're all inclusive now, which we weren't back in the past. Um, so there's some tweaks. We've just, yeah. we've just made it a little bit better. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure you have. Mm -hmm. I want to go back. I want to experience it all over again. Maybe do a different route this time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's so neat what you said, Tamara. Like every time you go on the train, it's something different because the colors may be different, the wildlife's different, um, the season. And uh, so you, can't, you could go multiple times and have different experiences. Mm -hmm. so, um, we just have a few questions. Um, so just to confirm, uh, you got your, your season, uh, this season is fully canceled, right? All the way up until so you're going to be re. Well, I'll challenge you on that. Cause we didn't cancel it. The train is sitting here at the station, but okay. currently due to border closures, we don't actually have any guests that can come on board the train. <laughs> so until borders open, we, we have suspended departures because we just have no guests to host right now. Okay. Um, okay. So I see the next question, are Americans going to be on board? So we're not operating this season right now because of border closures. While we actually could be running, as mentioned, we just as a company decided for safety, we just don't want to do it. Um, it. It was a risky decision, but we have decided that. Will Americans be coming on board next year? They were more than 50% of our demographics historically, but I have no idea what the borders will be like next, um, you know, next May when we start operating. 
So I can't answer that, but yes, historically they would. Um, generally, it's uh, Aussies, Brits, Canadians, and Americans. Okay, that was going to be my next question. What percentage is Canadian versus international? Uh, so Canadians are only about 20% of our demographics. Okay, okay. And then 30 international, 50 American. Well, it changes every year. Up until five years ago, it was, it was predominantly Aussies and Brits. Yeah. Um, and then in 2017, during our 150, Canada guests spiked up quite a bit. Okay. And yeah. we're kind of looking at next year, similar to that, you know, okay. once again, Canadians being more interested in traveling in Canada. Um, the, the whole American thing right now, that's really, uh, that's a political question. So I don't know where that'll fit. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. For sure. Um, and just a question about, um, like you, you did mention the lift uh, in the gold um, mm -hmm. these cars, but getting onto the train, if somebody had, a, had trouble just stepping into the train, even in the silver leaf, are there all lifts? We have lifts for all of that. We are completely 100% US ADA. So the washrooms have uh, rails. We have lifts for everyone up, um, including quadriplegic guests. We will lean towards silver leaf in that case for their own comfort. Um, but uh, if, for example, we get this a lot of times, people are traveling in a small group or a family group, and only one person maybe had recently had a knee or hip replacement, and they still want to go in gold leaf, that's fine. We can accommodate them on and off. The part that is difficult though, bear in mind, is within the Rockies and on coaches. Because as you know, when you get onto coaches, they always have those few stairs going up. Yeah. So you might want to consider looking into getting some private transfers, um, especially if you're a small group, because dealing with some of the, you know, Brewster coaches can be difficult. Okay, perfect. Um, and then, um, just had a question you mentioned like about the meals being a la carte so the days where you're say in Whistler for like a full half day can you go back on the train and have dinner anytime like you just no. like, okay no. set time yeah okay. no so those days your time off the train yeah so in Whistler is a different different than anywhere else but that would be a free time so that's up to you Okay. But it, as you saw in the promotion, you can have one free dinner included. So if you wanted to have it in Whistler, which would then make everything inclusive, mm -hmm. then you actually could have that. Okay, perfect. However, when you're going the other direction, you don't arrive into Whistler until late in the evening. So dinner is on board the train. Because now, so if you're traveling from Jasper through Quinell to Whistler, Vancouver, it's the opposite. You're going to arrive Whistler late at night, but the next day you're not going to leave to Vancouver until three in the afternoon. Okay. So in that case, your breakfast, lunch would be on your own. Okay, perfect. Awesome. And so, sorry, time. sorry, Julie, sorry to interrupt. Uh, Tamara, can you just maybe touch a little bit on um, the transition so that if you, for example, on the route from Vancouver heading into Banff, you're overnighting in Kamloops. Um, you'd mentioned like the transfers are all included. What about the luggage? Some people might be wondering about the luggage. Do they have to, you know, claim it themselves and move it nope. to the hotel? No, nope. like I said, um, luggage handling is included in everything. So we actually have these uh, wonderful Rocky Mountaineer ferries <laughs> that we call them. So what did happen, and I just have to use that word because anything could change next year. Um, but what would happen is, believe it or not, the luggage doesn't come on the train for storage purposes. It actually comes on a truck and it will arrive at your midpoint hotel about six hours before you do. It will then get placed in your hotel room. So when you arrive into Kamloops, you'll have your key in hand, for example. You'll get from the train onto a coach. That coach will take you to your hotel. You'll have a key in hand. You don't have to wait in line. You don't have to leave a credit card at front desk or anything. You go right to your hotel room and your luggage will be ready and waiting in your room for you. The next morning as well, you leave your luggage in the room. You don't have to wake up early and put it in the hall. You leave it at your room and the Rocky Mountaineer Ferries will pick it up and move it to the next destination. Perfect. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> easy, so, easy. Contactless yeah. and... <laughs> 
It does. They're long days on the train because you're really not doing anything. You know, you're sitting, you're talking, you're socializing, you're eating a lot of incredible food. We're not used to eating like incredible lunches like that. They're, I call them more late lunches, more like a European style dinner and usually a drink or two more than you're used to having during the day. So, you know, in the evening, most people are pretty knackered. They maybe go for a walk or just sit outside and enjoy fresh air early to bed because there are long days. So you wake up early in the morning and transfer back to the station as well. Perfect. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah, it's definitely something you can't replicate this experience on your own. And uh, no. I love I am always when we're driving. It's so beautiful, the scenery. I always want to pull over and take pictures. But this way, you just jump out into the into onto the viewing platform and take as many pictures you as don't you have to actually our host will explain how to take the perfect picture from inside because oh. everyone wants to do that so our hosts i mean they're so knowledgeable we have something like an 83 percent um retent so they are seasonal workers and 83 percent of them come back year after year um some of our train managers have been there for 30 years since we've worked there wow. so they'll tell you you know like for your a smartphone, if you hold it right to the glass, it seems counterintuitive, but then you get no glare. Oh. So you get a perfect picture. Um, so they're, they're really good at telling you things like that. That's yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, that's wonderful. I don't think we have any more questions. You are very thorough, Tamara. Th thank you so much. And if anyone has questions on, again, like itineraries and like, you know, add, little add-ons or anything, like feel free to um, contact. Someone raised their hand, so I'm not sure if they didn't type a question in, but I saw someone just raised a hand. Oh, uh, maybe they can just reach out to you then. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much. And uh, thank you again, everyone for joining us. It's just such a privilege and a, a pleasure for you to spend time with us. And um, can't wait until we're sitting face to face again. Um, Tamara, thank you so much for your time. And we look forward to seeing everybody next week. Enjoy your evening. Everyone. Have a great night, everybody. Bye. Thank you, Tamara. Bye. Bye.